What's the word, y'all? It's time to actually talk about the Utah Jazz. It is time to actually talk about the Utah Jazz because they are 10-3 and on the season after a comeback win against the Atlanta Hawks. Before the season started, Vegas puts together their over-unders. They're projected to win X amount of games. The Utah Jazz are projected to win 23 games, y'all. They have 10 wins a couple weeks into the season. If you thought the over was a lock, you should have put that money on it because here they are. You know, every single season we see a team start off extremely hot and then they regress to the means. Like, for example, I'm looking at it right now. The Charlotte Hornets last season started off 4-1. The New York Knicks started off last season 4-1. And, and then eventually, those teams ended up missing the playoffs completely. Hot starts happen every single season. I remember it was the Orlando Magic a few years ago. Missed the playoffs. And, and for the beginning of this year, when the Utah Jazz started off 3-0, when they started off 4-0 or 4-1, whatever it was, that's what I thought it was. I mean, at this point, the sample size is 13 games. This is no longer just a hot start. This is a well-oiled machine that is really good. But first, I do want to say, I know we usually do these recaps and I talk about a little bit about every single game that will not happen today because I was at Bulls versus Pelicans. Recap of that, Brandon Ingram is nice. We all knew that, but it's a fact. Um, it was a really cool night. In the house tonight, please welcome Chicagoland native and lifelong Bulls fan, Kenny Beecham. Legitimately one of the best nights of my, of my life. Every time I go to a Bulls game, I end up missing some crazy performances in the NBA or just crazy games in general. Like Javon Carter had 36, 12, and 4. How the hell did that happen? I got to go watch the footage. I see the Kings beat the Cavs. Got to watch that. So I went on to Twitter and said, out of all of the games that I missed today, which game is the most important or which game should I watch? And people are saying, go watch Utah come back on the Atlanta Hawks. So I did. And here we are talking about it. I also see the Minnesota Timberwolves lost to the Suns with no Chris Paul. Um, and of course, no Cam Johnson slash Jay Crowder and the vibes aren't great. I'm sure the Timberwolves are going to get their own video eventually, but let's stay on the positive side because I've had such a great day. Other than the Bulls losing, I've had such a great day. We'll stick on the positives and one of the best stories in all of basketball. I saw a tweet a little, a little minute ago that said, hey, if the Utah Jazz's jerseys were better, they would be America's team. And I, I, I agree. I hate the jerseys so much. They have one jersey that's pretty, pretty good. But like, anyway, 10 and three, when they were on the beginning hot streak, I think I came on to here. It's like, I don't understand how they're doing it. What the hell is going on? They they have a what seems like talent deficiency compared to a lot of the people they beat across basketball. How do they keep winning these games? And I can't say the formula is simple. They're doing this and doing this and doing that because I think it changes from night to night. For example, like I said, I went back to watch this game. They were down by like 15 points in the third quarter, right? And, and Coach Will Hardy, one of the reasons I really like this team, Coach Will Hardy roll with the guys that were there to help them within the run who were those guys you asked malik beasley was absolutely incredible today but the one that might go a little bit under the radar because he didn't hit five threes or six threes like malik beasley did was walker kessler walker kessler felt like kind of a little throw in to the rudy gobert trade hey we drafted him in the first round this year we don't really care about it here y'all needed a center here we'll give you a young one and off the bench today, Will Hardy gave him enough confidence to keep him in the game because, well, he was all over the place on the defensive side of the ball, a couple blocks, and then the, the end of the third quarter happened. I think they were maybe down by five. And in my, my mind, I was like, okay, starters coming back in. Nope. Will Hardy let Walker continue to play for like six more minutes after that because he was having such an amazing impact. And it feels like that's the type of vibes that are that are going on with the Utah Jazz. Like, it don't matter who it is on this night or this night and this night, whoever the high hand is or whoever's the one keeping us in the game, we will play them. There is no politics. There's no emotions. This is 12 to 15 ball players that care about just winning basketball games. And yeah, I'm somewhat buried in the lead when I'm when we talking about the Utah Jazz, not to mention the name Laurie Marketing yet. A season high tonight. 32 points eight rebounds and hit some really big shots down the stretch bro I, I think i've mentioned it already like three times on this channel since the season has started that i'm extremely happy for Lloyd market and that he got to a place that is allowing him to be the Lloyd market and that i think a lot of us bulls fans star he could be for the first couple years of his career i will i will not stop blaming jim boylan for stunning this man's growth i will not he, he will always get the blame until the day i rest i think that jim boylan was the guy that prevented Lloyd market from being this in chicago but i'm happy that he was freed and then he ended up where he is because i mean at this point he is an all-star he is an all-star 
32 points. I mean, and, and the thing I was like, okay, what is he doing differently, right? I can't actually show you this, but just 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 trust me when I read you these numbers. The last year of Laurie Marketing in Chicago, I'm gonna compare him to Chicago's version and not um Cleveland's version because Cleveland's version he was somewhat down the totem pole like fourth or fifth most important slash impactful player I'm gonna send him to Chicago I'll talk about to Chicago because when he was here for the most part he was one of the guys we we're trying to build around and I, I can't show you this because this website costs money and they I don't want to get in trouble for showing this but just just take my word for it when Laurie Marketing was with, was with the Chicago Bulls nearly 40 percent of his touches that ended in a shot were strictly spot up which means that anytime he put a shot up, it was literally him standing on the wing, standing in the corner, not moving whatsoever. Compared to this season, it's down to 26%. You, you ask Kenny, what's up? Transition is play, play is up by a ton. Moving off screen is up. Offensive putbacks is up almost quadruple of what it was with the Chicago Bulls. And he's not being used as a role man nearly as much. Because when he was a role man, it wasn't a very effective offense. And now... He's got other things that he's amazing at. The transitions, he is in the top percentile in transition this season. And that's not necessarily getting to the basket and dunking. Sometimes it's spotting up. Sometimes it's doing this, it's doing that. And he's just overall has rounded out his game to be more than just a stretch four. And it's so beautiful to see because nobody should be pigeonholed to this one role, especially a guy like Larry Marketer who was like 21 years old at the point. If he's within 17 feet of the basket, he is in a 92nd percentile when it comes to points per possession. I know a lot, a lot of these stats don't mean anything to a lot of people, but I'm just showing how efficient he is. Once you get rid of his three-point shooting this season, which has somewhat come along, but like the beginning, he was shooting like 20%. But the last couple of weeks, he's really put it together. But if he's close to the basket slash in the mid-range area, he's one of the best in basketball right now. That's la la the Larry market that we watched. You know what I'm saying? So it's so cool to see him go. But more than that, this is just a cohesive team that moves it, moves the ball and feels as close. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to word this without it feeling like a backwards compliment because I don't want it to come off that way. It feels like a legitimate college team. And, and it, it feels at times, and I'm only saying at times because, of course, their star power is not nearly as much. The way they move the ball and move without the ball, it reminds me of, of a baby, baby version of the 2014 San Antonio Spurs, which is the greatest form of basketball I have ever experienced as an NBA fan. Like I said, very, very poor man's version of that, but it's moving like that. The ball is hitting every single hand before a shot goes up, and that's including having like Jordan Clarkson on the roster. They have so many people that are having career high years when it comes to assist numbers because everything is unselfish basketball. But they still have this huge, huge decision to make because, well, as good as it's been. As good of a run as it's been, you, you kind of still want super quality draft picks. And the only reason I'm saying that is because when I look at what their roster is or who they who's on their roster, I'm trying to figure out how do you hit the next step? And it might be extremely early, consider this is year one of trading away two star players. But like, how, what is the path to get to contention? And honestly, you're never too early to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? To at least draw out the map. And in my mind, the path to do that is to draft some superstar talent. And I've heard that just from a little birdies across the association that this is the draft class you want to have at least a lottery pick. Everybody ain't going to get Vic or Scoop. But to have a lottery pick is extremely important this season. The one thing that that's saving them a little bit is they have a couple different picks this season. They got Minnesota's pick. Who knows who Minnesota's about to turn into? And then they have the, the worst pick of houston brooklyn and philly i think it is so they should have three first round picks this year including their own maybe in their my a we just gonna keep winning games potentially make the playoffs and then package three these three picks to get number nine i don't really know but they they have to make a decision soon because there's some teams out there in basketball right now that don't like they go win a ton of games and you winning 10 right through the first three weeks of basketball is already putting you behind and in, in the lottery sweepstakes but maybe that's not even what they trying to pitch to their fans maybe they like hey if laurie keeps this up the all-star game is here in our city this season He's going to be an all-star. We're not building around Laurie. That's not our. That's not what we're trying to do, but we already have an all-star. And then Walker Kessler. Could he Could he turn into a, a really good rim protector? He, he already averaged the most blocks in college basketball last season, and he's translated some of that to the NBA. We got THT, 
who looks like the, the version of THC we got for the last two games is better than almost any version we saw with the Lakers. And we still got like Ote Abaji, who ain't got no PT, but a former first round pick from just this season. So like, I don't, I just think that Danny Ainge and them have a lot to figure out. And it's going to be hard to try to tell these dudes, eh, our direction is a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? After getting this taste of success, you know what I'm saying? Some of these dudes ain't never won before. And now they finally doing it. Larry's winning as a one option. You can't tell that man that we about to try to lose once we get to the late game. Absolutely not. One than anything, a lot of these pieces are like scraps from other trades. Like legitimately speaking, when the Donovan Mitchell trade happened, do you think the front office was like, we really, really want Laurie because we think he could be an all-star? Or was it how many picks you given? And some of those picks are after after Donovan Mitchell's contract is up. We want to take our chance on that because we don't know if he'll resign to Cleveland. And if he don't resign to Cleveland, then boom, we got we got your draft picks. I don't know if Laurie Marketing was the big piece in all of this. I mean, listen, the trade happened and we mentioned the people that were involved that said the Cleveland Cavaliers didn't get rid of no core pieces. Laurie Marketing wasn't a core piece. Laurie Marketing was a trade that happened last offseason that incorporated Derrick Jones Jr. and Larry Nance. Like, that was a small trade in the course of basketball. He was in this trade, not, not just to fill salary, because he was still, he was talented last season with Cleveland, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like, yes, we got our next guy. We got our next guy, Laurie Market. At least, I mean, I, maybe they, that's legitimately what they thought, and the talent department, the scouting department is crazy, but I don't think that's what it was. Or like Walker Kessler, perfect example. They like, hey, give us all the young players plus your picks. It wasn't like, yes, Walker's going to be the center of our future. You know, so it's like a lot of – Danny Ainge did this trade for draft capital. He he did it to, to the Brooklyn Nets 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I don't know how long it was, for the draft capital. He couldn't care less about the actual players they got back in that trade. It was legitimately – for the draft capital and that draft capital turned into Jalen Brown eventually it turned into this it turned into that and I think that's what they were thinking this time around but the people were so nice that they looking like a well-oiled machine I mean Will Hardy's the youngest coach in basketball if I'm not mistaken he is looking like one of the better ones easily easily offensively and defensively and they don't even have like crazy defensive talent on his roster if you look at it just look, looking at their roster how many of them are considered plus defenders it's not a ton of them y'all and right now, I'm looking, I think they have the 16th best defense in basketball. 16th best, second best offense. That's that's the thing that scares me a little bit. Just because I don't know if that's going to be sustainable. Second best offense in basketball. But then again, I look at their shot diet and I look at their percentages and I'm like, it ain't like they started off the season shooting 60% from three. You know what I'm saying? Their, their openness rate is really high. They're getting good open looks from people that we know can shoot. Malik Beasley, plus shooter. Jordan Clarkson has always been a good shooter. Laurie Market is a career 36% of career shooter. He ain't even got it going just yet. So I'm looking at their shot diet and be like, it's, it's not like they're about to just fall off a cliff when it comes to their shooting. It's not like their transition is going to be any, uh, any worse or worse enough where it goes from top five to the bottom five. So number two is crazy, but it's maybe not that crazy. Wow. I also don't think people believe it around the league. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's the Jazz. Who on that roster? Oh, we be all right. You're not all right. They will cut, they will cut your throat out. You know what I'm saying? They did not foul Trey Young one time. They didn't send Trey Young to the foul line one time. I think Trey Young's averaging like seven free throw attempts per game before this night. He didn't get fouled one time. Good defense. You know what I'm saying? Just overall good defense, good teams. And I feel like I could talk about them forever. And, and I was late to the party. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I watch possessions and highlights of my, my players that I really like. But through the first five or so games of the year, I was like, oh, I start. I ain't really caring too much. The last week or so, they have, they're up there on my league pass. You know what I'm saying? When people on Twitter were telling me, Kenny, this is the game you got to watch. Easily. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I watched Lord Market. I heard he had a career night. You know? So uh, let me know what you think about the Jazz. Big fear. This video jinxed them. So I'm going to put in the title that we're not jinxing them. And hopefully that's, hopefully that's the case, man.